daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody. Josh Neighbors here for the Locked On Big 12 Podcast. Then joining us today, it is Kevin Ashenfelder, the voice of the Houston Cougars. Kevin, appreciate you giving us some time today. Oh, thanks, Josh. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so I am also the Locked On Nationals host, and I, I'm currently watching the Nats game actually in the background. So you do you work for the uh, do some stuff for the Astros as well, and obviously those two teams have a little bit of history, don't they? Yes, they do. My 25th season uh, is being a part of the broadcast for the Astros, mostly uh, pregame, postgame. But uh, yeah, that's my my 25th year, and uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a base. You know how they are. You're either you're you're a baseball guy or not. I'm a baseball guy, and yes, absolutely have. Uh, have you know from the 2019 World Series a, a lot of history with uh, with the Washington Nationals. I'm actually doing a show later today, Q and A, and one of the questions is who should the Nats fans root for when the playoffs come around? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, I don't think the Astros are going to be on the list. I, I don't think that's going to be there. I understand. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about Houston going to the Big 12 and really what they bring. But first, there's a lot of history, and I'm somebody you know I'm in my 20s, and I think for younger fans might not be as educated on the fact that Houston was potentially going to join the Big 12 in that last version of realignment that we saw in the late 2010s, but there was some friction between the brass at Houston and Bob Bowles being the Big 12 at that point. Can you kind of take us through how we got here and what happened back then so people were now refreshed on kind of how we got from point A then to point yeah. B now? Yeah, and I, I can't exactly speak to you know there being friction. I, I don't know about that, and I don't even know how serious they were about expansion. You know, were they serious about expanding? Because it's not like they just left Houston out. They left everybody. <laughs> they didn't expand right. at all. So, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, the the phrase we are going to explore the possibility of expanding can be turned into they're talking about expansion. Well, you know, I, I, and I don't know. I don't think anybody that wasn't in that room uh, knows. And so. I, you know, I just can't. It's, it's really difficult to to say. I, I, yeah, well, they they did. They they did everything they needed to do, and 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 the Big Twelve supposedly was was looking hard at them, and then uh, last minute they said, you know what? Oh, oh wait, uh, never mind. But at the same time, you know what? You improve your facilities. Uh, you you do all these different things that make you ready for that opportunity when it comes up. So it, to me, it wasn't a, it wasn't a wasted exercise. I mean, it wasn't false hustle. It was it was getting yourself ready down the road, in which uh, obviously has come to fruition now. But uh, you know, their their facilities uh, they they they've got good facilities. They they're in the fourth largest city in the country. They're, they bring a lot to the table. And what has the reaction been of, of Houston Cougars fans, the alumni base? with this move to the Big 12, what, what have they been saying? Is there a lot of positivity, mixture of both? What have you been hearing? Oh, there's a ton of positivity. I, I, everything, just about everything I've heard has been positive. Uh, you know, you've, you've tried so hard and, and you feel as though you've kind of been left out a little bit over the years. Not a little bit. You've been left out over the years. And for whatever reason, I, I have no idea. I just, I still go back and I look at college football and I see one program and you say, okay, they have an opportunity to play for a national championship and another program doesn't. What does, and not picking on any specific, what is, right. what has Rutgers done to have the opportunity to, if they ran the table to play for a national championship, whereas university of central Florida does not. I mean, you know, that's, that's the crazy thing. It's the only sport. And I've said this before, the only sport where everyone that plays on the same level does not have the opportunity to win a national championship. And so it's it's now you're putting yourself into a position where the Big 12, you're, you, you know, a uh, power five conference is going to, you know, to give you that opportunity. And, and I think what people in the Big 12, I'm not sure they they uh, they I'm not sure they they quite understand how good the level of competition is in the American uh, mm -hmm. Cincinnati. Cincinnati's maybe the best team in the state of Ohio. Uh, I yeah. Mean, true. UCF uh, Houston has had, you know, Houston has won a New Year's six bowl game. I mean, uh so you're talking about some programs that, that have done things the right way. Now, all of a sudden, they're trying to get – now they're getting an opportunity. BYU, absolutely outstanding. A year ago, mm -hmm. I got a chance to call one of their games. They played Houston. So, uh, yeah, I, I think people are going to be surprised at the level that they bring. And, uh, uh, you know, is it Oklahoma? Not right now. But you know what? Let's see what happens down the road. We'll see. Yeah, I think with that, you know, you made a great point about the the Rutgers thing, right? And the whole point of the Big Ten bringing Rutgers in was the the, the New York market, but everybody who lives in New York swears it takes them an hour and a half to get to Piscataway. 
So, right, the, you know, really what is what is the intent? And Houston, who is literally their name is Houston, which is, the you know, one of the five biggest markets in the entire country, like you said, not in a uh, not in an opportunity, not in a, in a conference they can play. For I also think you're right in the Cincinnati point. I think if Luke Fickle decides to stay, let's just say those three schools join next year and Texas and Oklahoma left, um, Cincinnati would probably be the best team. Maybe by a maybe by a, mar- a considerable margin yeah. too. They'd be the I, best team I, in the entire conference. Like not close. Right? I, I'm with you. They're 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 really really good. And and uh, I mean I've seen them. You know obviously I've been doing these these U of H games for for the last nine years. And I've seen them through good times and I've seen them through not so good right. times. But I'm telling you right now, it's not good times for Cincinnati. It's great times for Cincinnati. They're really good. They're legit. Uh, it's not like they're going to sneak up on people. And you know their schedule their their schedule is going to dictate what people think of them down the road, uh, you know, and not to just focus on them. Central Florida has put together a, a very nice program, obviously, with Josh Heupel, who's now at uh, uh, Tennessee. Uh, yeah. Tennessee, And, uh, you know, so they have. And they got Gus Mills on. I mean, yeah. the, the guy is one of the few coaches to beat yep. Nick Saban multiple times. You know, offensive, I mean, was the was the best coach on a national championship team. I know Gene Chizik has a head coach, but let's be honest, the, the mastermind behind the offense was Gus. Right. And. You know, it's they were able to get him as opposed to sitting on his butt and getting paid to not coach. He said, "No, I want to go to Central Florida and and coach." And huge school. I, I think it just kind of speaks to the fact that so many people nationally have been saying, and I know this is Big Twelve centric, and, and our interests say this is positive, but like these schools all do bring something. And I think to your point, I I, I do hate to pick on certain schools, but somehow the idea that the Big Twelve is not going to be a Power Five conference after this edition, like. Does college basketball not exist? I'm not sure if you've seen some of the the ratings, but the ratings still dictate. They, they you know, I think it might have been Ken Palm. I, I'm not 100 sure, but one of those you know metrics said that it's still the best basketball conference in America without OU and Texas, and if you add in the four new schools, well, so you, you it's you a big power a, conference. Yeah, you added a Final Four team. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been saying this. They just made the Final Four. They and, ju- and, they just made the Final Four. And now now you put on top of that programs that have been able to not just survive, but to thrive. And they're doing that without the, without the money, the, without the, the revenue generated by television on a Power Five conference. Uh, with playing, uh, and this is with no disrespect to anybody as well, uh, let's face it, Houston played in a, in a conference championship game, and people say, well, there were only 38,000 people there. Well, guess what? They brought 37,500 of them because, you know, your opponent – you know, they didn't bring anybody and, and everybody that's going to come to a game is going to come see you. I mean, they're not going to come. They're not coming to see ECU. They're coming. Right. But now you're going to start bringing it. Now, when Baylor comes to town, now you're going to have Baylor fans at the game. You're going to have Houston fans at the game. When Houston goes to Waco, vice versa, uh, same thing in Lubbock. So uh, yeah, it, it benefits everybody. And now you start playing on that level playing field and now you start maybe getting a recruit now you can't and this was always the knock too is that they said well you know what and Barry Switzer said it. he goes why would you whenever they were talking about putting them in the big 12 remember I don't know if you remember the Barry Switzer quote he goes why would you add legitimacy to that program he goes right. they, they beat they beat people without you know without being in a, in a major conference now you're gonna put them in a major or I'm not going to say that because the American is a major conference a right. power yeah he said why why would you give them a power five status they're beating people without the power five status. So now you're going to put them in that. Now, what is that going to do for their recruiting? And you know what? That's the thing about Barry. You may not like what he says, but coach Switzer <laughs> speaks the truth. And, uh, and, and I think never was a truer statement made than just that. So let's now let's see as we go forward where this takes these other programs. I think the recruiting part of it's really interesting. I think, and if you look at the regions, this is true in every region. So BYU competing against their in-state rival, Utah, right? What does Utah have? the the power conference. So that's going to help them in California. It's going to help them in Arizona and down in the Texas where they're going to be recruiting Cincinnati. Where are they? Ohio, a high school football hotbed. Who are they going up against? Ohio state, Michigan schools like that. You know, Penn state goes into there. They've got that now too. Um, Central Florida now, same exact thing. So, and then Houston, obviously, you know, in Texas, right. It's funny. All four of these schools can now make that claim and, this is going to elevate them. And I think this is the part that not everybody's talking about. You know what people complain about the most in college football? Par- the lack of parity. Yep. Do you know what conference is going to be the most exciting probably year in and year out when That's it comes point. to football? Think about how OU's run the show for the last six years, right? Six, eight, six straight titles. But think about 
the different teams that have played them along the way. Iowa State, Baylor, you know, Oklahoma State, Texas, Kansas State. Now, I throw Texas there just to say it's been different every year. And I think now you're going to see more of that. So if you want to talk about a compelling conference, the Big 12 is going to have it. And I, I think that's something that people might say, well, we talk crap badly about the Big 12, but wow, look at it. Now we're all having fun watching Big 12 games. Yeah, and uh, I, I agree. And that, that's, a, that's a good point. It's something I really haven't thought that much about. Uh, and, you know, I, I just remember <clears throat> going back, and because I'm, I'm old, so I can remember, and I followed University of Houston football for a long, long time. I can remember in 1976 when the University of Houston was allowed into the Southwest Conference for the first time. Well, they won the league three of the first four years. And mm. now, and then you said to yourself, oh, okay, this is why they did. This is why they were right. never able to get into the Southwest Conference. Uh, they went to Austin and beat Texas 30 to nothing, handed Daryl Royal his worst home loss ever. So, I mean, they played with a chip on their shoulder and they were, uh, you know, they, they won it the first, like I said, three of the first four years. They went to the, uh, they went to, the the Cotton Bowl and they weren't even allowed to play all their games in the Astrodome. They had to go play some of them at Rice Stadium during that right. first year as well. So anyway, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see that now you've you put another feather in your cap. And that's before you even start talking about <clears throat> your ability when you're talking recruiting. Now that kid that may have gone, you know, said, well, you know what, Oklahoma Oklahoma was on me hard, but I didn't want to go to Houston because they I didn't have a chance to play you know, the, the kind of football that they were going to play in, on that level. But now all of a sudden he goes, what, wait, mom and dad can come see me play every weekend. Right. I can, I can go on Sunday night when I don't have to lay around the, you know, the apartment, I can go back home and get, get home cooking whenever we have a day off for practice. Don't think that stuff doesn't matter. I mean, it, right. it matters. And, uh, and you're hoping that that's going to be something that they can benefit from. There's a lot of talent in the city of Houston. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of course there is. Yeah. And, and this, and obviously we know how well, Schools like LSU do right sure. in Houston. I mean, Oklahoma. Oklahoma yeah. comes down there. University and, of Texas at Norman. So. <laughs> and I, I just, yeah, uh, I'm interested to think about, let's just talk about that Texas dynamic, right? The four schools remaining in the state of Texas and the Big 12 are going to be Texas Tech, Baylor, TCU, and Houston. They really all bring something different to the table. And when you think about, think about the, you know, where they're located, private or public, you know, geographics, religious affiliations, this is a really interesting four team dynamic. And I know some people kind of made the argument almost, well, isn't Houston just kind of Texas tech in a big city. And in so there's the, the comparison I get with that is, you know, maybe you could say, look, Texas tech is a average or above average football program <clears throat> that also in basketball made a national championship game. Yes, that's Houston right. just made a final four. So I understand, I understand that point, but Lubbock is not is definitely not Houston. Um, and so I think there's just a lot, I think there is difference. There is variety. I, I don't think it's that repetitive. Like some people might, uh, some people might assert that. Yeah. And, and I agree. And, and what people, I don't think that, that are outside the, you know, the, this, this area, they don't understand is that there's history. And, uh, and I think that's a good thing because first ever Southwest conference game that the university of Houston played, they went to Waco and they beat Baylor. I mean, that's the stuff that granted it was a long time ago, you right. know, Houston and TCU playing in the Southwest conference, Texas. I mean, I, there is a, the people that are fans of these programs, they, they, they understand the history that these, these programs have with one another. And, uh, and I think that, that that's awesome for college football. I mean, I think that's what you need. You need those things. I think that's what separates college football from the NFL is that uh, you have these, you know, whether it's whether it's a hatred or at least a, a much more of a familiarity right. between between schools, you know, Alabama, Auburn, you can go on and on. I mean, just but that's that's the beauty to me of college football. That's why I'm a, I'm a college football guy, you know, always and forever. So this kind of brings me to the next point about specifically Houston's football program. Um, it's you know, it's it, I, I'd say for Dana Holgerson, he, he knew what he was getting into. And things got off to a little bit of a weird start, the whole D.R. King situation. I'm sure everybody's very familiar with that. But the results have not been there. I thought the Texas Tech game was a great chance for them to get a result against a Big 12 team, considering also everything going on there, not able to get it done. Um, he's, you know, would you say this is the this is the prove it year? Like he's he's got to get something done this year because with that change, you know, if things aren't going the right way, I could see them looking for a change in leadership to, to bring them into a new conference, although he's got experience in that conference. Uh, yeah, I disagree with you on that. Uh, okay. I, I, I do think that there's uh, 
there's latitude and there's trust uh, because <clears throat> I, I just I just do. You know, we all have our opinions, but I, I do no, you're, think you're, that there was you're more yeah. intimately familiar with it than I. So I, I would defer to you on that. No, and I do. I think that there's uh, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, you start getting uh, next year and, and if you don't start seeing improvement. Yeah, that's what happens with college football coaches that, right. you know, the heat gets turned up. But uh, there was a lot to I think there was a lot to to fix when he got here. Uh, and uh, so they had those runs with the Tom Herman years that, you know, Tom Herman was, was here for two years. And those are some of the most talented teams I've ever seen in the University of Houston's history. And Tom Herman benefited from, and this is, Tom Herman's a heck of a football coach. Uh, he benefited from the previous guy. Tony Levine was an abs absolutely phenomenal. You can, you, can, you can go through and look at all the people that he brought into this program that are now in the NFL that Tom Herman had for those two years. So uh, he had a very good, but then I think it kind of, it fell off a little bit and now, you know, it just takes a little while to build it back up. So yeah, it's a, hey, when you're, when you're making that kind of, you know, these money kind of money that college football coaches are making and, uh, and you don't produce, it's a result based business. We've all, we all know that and that's, you know, yeah, overstating the obvious, but I think he, uh, to people asked me this, I think last week before Texas tech, if, if the heat, you know, if he was, I, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see that being a hot seat right now. That's just, that's one person's opinion. And, uh, you know, I'm a radio play by play announcer. I'm not, whenever I go, uh, I don't go into to any of those meetings where all the, the, the high dollar people are. So right. I, I don't know, but that's just my opinion. And then, uh, basketball. I mean, this, the, you know, I know football is Texas. It's gotta be exciting, but the basketball program is, you know, with the final four last year, if I'm a Houston fan at this moment, my excitement is like, wow, if Kelvin can keep up anything like this, seeing those teams get to go play, you know, at Fall Allen Fieldhouse and go play. You know, I, I don't think people really properly rate Gallagher Ivor Arena where Oklahoma State plays, one of the great venues, <clears throat> all of college basketball, getting to go play in places like that. Morgantown as well, to go take the trip there. BYU's got a great arena as well. They get to go see this team take the show on the road now. I think that's, if I'm a Houston fan, that might be the thing I'm most excited about. It's funny you say that because uh, I did big, I been, did big 12 basketball on Fox Sports Southwest for, for years. And, uh, uh, I mean, going to Gallagher Iba, that may, that's my favorite. That's my favorite mm. arena, even over Fog Allen. I mean, I, I yeah. you know, now people are in Kansas are going, what? No, it's a, it's a great arena. It's a great atmosphere. It's a great arena. It's, it's, uh, but I mean, you're right. Uh, going to those places and taking a final four team. That's another thing that Houston has done. Speaking of facilities, uh, what they've been able to do, they built their own basketball exclusive facility. It is beautiful. It's the Guy Lewis Center. And then they built the Fertitta Center. Basically, that was old Hoffines Pavilion, which, you know, was was great in 1971. But uh, that's that wasn't the case anymore. And and you know, they were playing games in front of, you know, 95 people or whatever it was. Right. And and then it was just a, it wasn't a bad it wasn't a good place to come to. And now it's been the perfect storm. It's it's an absolutely gorgeous facility that they've been able to put together. The the arena's great unbelievable atmosphere i don't care if you're a ku fan or it, wherever you go in the country you're going to love watching a college basketball game at the Petita center and uh and the, kelvin kelvin's a kelvin's a heck of a coach i mean kelvin kelvin's one of the best I, this is not hyperbole this is not overblown kelvin's one of the best coaches in the, in the country mm. and that is i'll stand by that uh, i'll stand by that with anybody but uh he gets kids in there he gets system kids in there guys that it's not a you know it's it's guys that come in and they're gonna they're gonna play and uh, they're gonna play hard they're gonna they're gonna guard you <laughs> they uh, yeah they, they, he's he's got that thing headed in the right direction that's for sure and it's amazing to think about he's he's lost some guys too and then last year uh, you know being able to take that team and and uh, you know skip through the final to the final four uh, you know ran into a buzzsaw and a great team I mean, Baylor's gonna be they were gonna beat everybody. They, they were well, going to yeah, everybody. I mean, because everybody, most people thought that Gonzaga was the team to beat, and they took no, care of business it was Baylor. against Gonzaga. But anyway, they've done a great job building that program. That's and and I I'm I love college football, but I'm a big college basketball guy too. Mm -hmm. and, and man, I am I'm really looking forward to watching college basketball in the Big Twelve. Yeah, and I'm really happy they're coming in just because losing Chris Beard, you know, I, I think it's, for my money, he's my favorite coach in the country. Mm -hmm. Even though I, I think he's got some shortcomings, I think. He's got a really awesome career ahead of him. Good choice. Of the way. I mean, I mean, the, the program. Here we go. We're back. Okay, you get it. I think you get it. There, there we go. go. Yeah, we flipped that around. You were um, talking about Chris Beard. 
Yeah, yeah, no, the, the program that he has he's managed to build in a, such a short period of time is it's unbelievable. Uh, but I'm glad we get Calvin Sampson in there. A couple yeah. things to oh, go ahead. You have a point. No, go ahead. A um, couple things to to wrap up. What do you think is the number one, the, the biggest thing that Houston brings to, to the Big 12 Conference? Uh, they're going to bring. Initially, they're going to bring this city. Um, and I know it, this is what for people that are not from here and people don't understand. You know, when, I think people, especially outside the state of Texas, they think of the, the largest city and they think of Dallas. You know, they think it's right. Houston. Houston is about the size of Chicago. I mean, mm-hmm. it is a massive city. It's the second, it's the fourth largest city in the country. And some people say that the next time the census goes, it's, it'll be the third largest city in the country. They bring that to the table. And yes, uh, whenever Houston is good, and that's, that's predicated, hey, let me tell you something, that makes them just like everybody else. But when, when the Cougars are playing well, people turn on television sets. Mm. Uh, that was proved when they played Oklahoma at NRG Stadium back in 2016. That was proved when they uh, when they beat Lamar Jackson in, in uh, Louisville on a Thursday night, you know, and they were up 33 to nothing or whatever it was at halftime and sacked them 11 times. The ratings were big and and that's what that's a big thing right there that they bring to the table. They bring eyeballs and they also bring alumni bases from a lot of different schools uh, because you know there's, you know, there are thousands of Texas Tech grads that work in the city of Houston. Oil and gas industry is huge here. There are thousands of, uh, you know, I'm saying tens of thousands, Baylor, Baylor alum, mm-hmm. TCU, uh, you know, and you can also throw in L- you know, LSU, Texas, Texas A&M, all those for here. But, you know, when you've got, when you've got four and a half million people, you, you've got a big sample size mm-hmm. of a lot of different people. So I think that's something too. They, they bring an opportunity for, to spread the fandom, meaning that uh, if you if you grew up, you know, being a Baylor fan, you went to Baylor, but you know you just can't get to Waco. It's four it's a four hour drive or three and a half right. hour drive on weekends. Guess what? Every other year, there's a good chance that Baylor, your team's going to be playing right here, you know, just uh, th- two miles from downtown Houston. So I, I think that's a that's a big thing and something that I don't think uh, people quite understand just yet, but they will. Final question to you, and I've been asking everybody this: If you had to divide up the Big Twelve, the divisions, if you know you were commissioner. How would you do it? I, I said they should do a north and south type situation. I would keep all four Texas schools together I would add Oklahoma State and then do BYU for a south or whatever you want to call the division. And then I would do uh, the two Kansases together with Iowa State, UCF, and then West Virginia and Cincinnati. How would you divide it up? No, see that now you stole my thunder because that was you actually went through it a lot faster than I would have gone okay. through it. Now, no, that, no, that just, go ahead, take no, your time. It makes geographic sense. You're, you're absolutely right. It also, and you know what? People go, well, it doesn't have to be geographic. It's uh, everybody's going everywhere now. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, uh, you know where you're, where you are. It's going to be you could be playing anywhere, West Virginia, or, or I still think you know Missouri's in the SEC. I mean, I, I still right. that, that just they're in the SEC confuse. East. <laughs> yeah, and. and, and <laughs> And, you know, Maryland's in the, Maryland's in the Big Ten. These things, certain things, right. are just have yet to compute into my brain. But but what you said makes sense, and I, and I love the fact that there are people that that remember the days of the Southwest Conference and remember them fondly. And there's a lot of people that wish the Southwest Conference had. Uh, there's, I think everybody wishes the Southwest Conference had never gone away to begin with. Right. But, yeah. Uh, but you know what? It did, and that's what it is. And but now you get a chance to get that feel of of bringing that back. And I think people. Uh, like I said, I, I think it's going to be a high level of competition. And anybody that anybody that thinks it's not probably uh, has probably not paid. Not paying attention. And, and I understand. Paid paid close attention. I'm trying to be kind here, but paid close right. attention. You're not paying to attention the, to, be, yeah, it's not to the bad. UCFs and the Cincinnatis of the world, and uh, and, and and BYU. I put BYU right there as well. BYU is another program that I don't know. I've done several BYU games, uh, and I've done BYU games. I mean, I've done BYU basketball games in the Virgin Islands. They always bring. They might have like one of the five best fan bases in the country. You're, I'll tell you what; it's funny. As soon as they, as soon as the news broke that them joined, um, my my Twitter has been flooded with people following, and you know, mm-hmm. I did an episode with the Locked On Cougars host, and people yep. were so receptive. I mean, they're fired up, and they're they just they care so much. That's why the, their stadium capacities are so high for football and basketball, and they fill those places up. That's another awesome venue. Uh, both, yeah. both, uh, both their basketball venue and their football stadium. Have you seen the baseball? The baseball no, is like, I mean, oh my god! Really? Uh, I haven't been there, but like a picture, you you know, you close your yeah. eyes and you're like, oh my god, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to a whole lot more visits with you as well.
Yeah. Awesome. Kevin, appreciate your time. Is there anything you want to promote before you get out of here? No, I mean, we're good. I, I uh, you know, I, we, we, we just keep on keeping on and doing what we do. And then, uh, you know, the, uh, hoping the Cougars can uh, continue to have some success this season, a bit of a bump in the road as far as uh, Texas tech was concerned, but uh, hoping to write the ship and you know what it, the proverbial get better week to week. And we'll see if they're able to do that. Grambling this week. Is that who it is? is yep. That, I'm, yep. Uh, Grambling, Grambling week, Tigers. Right? Yep. Yep. So. Home of Doug Williams. Uh, I believe Doug yes, Williams. Is. Went Doug there. Williams, former, former Grambling head coach. If I'm, there, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. There you go. And I'm not. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> uh, Kevin Eschenfelder. Thank you so much. Voice of the Cougars. Josh, anytime, buddy. Thank you.